Hi everybody and welcome back to Greater Manchester Stories. This episode's amazing guest is a lady you've probably heard of, you've probably watched her videos online, June Slater. June, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for coming on. Let's jump straight into it. So my first question really is, obviously, as you know, I'm standing for Mayor of Greater Manchester against Andy Burnham. And in the last few elections for Mayor, only one out of three people vote for the Mayor. That's, you know, somewhere between 30% and 33% of people vote. Most people stay at home. Why do they stay at home? Do they not realise that they have the power to change this country in that vote? Uh, no, they don't realise. And there's never, ever been a more important time to get out and vote for, for a metro mayor in particular. <clears throat> because the thing is, you are not going to change this. Don't wait for a general election. That's a big mistake. It's the biggest mistake you can make. Because waiting for a general election, as you've seen with the last three or four elections we've had, whoever ends up the leader, if the ones with the power don't like it, they change them. They change <clears throat> what should have been Andrea Ledson for Theresa May. <clears throat> Do excuse me. They changed, um, they got rid of Boris. And then the, the members of the party voted for Liz Truss. She even got in number 10 and they ousted her. They put someone else in that they wanted. They slot them into position like a chess piece. The most important elections you can vote in are your council and your metro mayor elections. It doesn't get any more important than that. The ones that are staying at home because they're going to vote, they'll bother to vote at a general election. No, this is your opportunity, vote in the mayorals, because it's the only way you'll change this country with what's going on and how fast it's going down the pan is at a local level. You're not going to change it from the top, waiting for your MP to... Um, get a slot in Parliament to ask a question that just gets a political answer and nothing ever happens. That's all they can do in Parliament. You, you miss judging the power there. The people have the power at the local level. It's the most important thing you can do right now. And I would advise... I completely agree. I completely agree. For the people, for the people watching this who, who never vote who may vote once every 10 years, or the last time they voted was for Brexit, and they're sat at home watching Combination Street saying to themselves, what's the point? You've answered part of that, but how, how do we energise them? How, how, do we, how do we make them go, do you know what? I am powerful. My vote does matter. I am a citizen of this country, and my voice matters. How do we get that message to them? By doing things like this, by talking to them. In fact, now you've mentioned that, I'll do more of it. I'll, I'll be doing more about how it's important to vote at a local level. Imagine if you could change the Manchester mayor and change the London mayor, two really important cities in the country. If you change those two characters, what a difference you'd have, because neither of them are in control of crime or the things that matter to us. And what the people sat at home, yeah, the ones who got out, they, they we're an apathetic country because we've had a good standard of living and we've let it slide. We've let it slide because we didn't expect our politicians to let it slide. We voted them in. We expected them to look after us, and they're not doing. Most of them are gravy-trained politicians, too young to even understand life these days. Half, some of them are criminals, um, and they're not interested in the public, as Jack Straw, MP for Blackburn, said. The British man isn't worth saving. How the hell do you run a country with people like that in your parliament? So I believe the British man is very much worth saving. And the best way you can save him, this isn't me. I'm not doing some sort of promotion here. This is the truth. This is what I believe. You'll save your country by saving your town first, by saving your local area. Get as many people in who aren't a lot. I haven't got an allegiance to the Labour or the Tory party because these parties have both crippled this country, both of them. And the best thing Manchester can do is to get a fresh face in there with real priorities. It wasn't just sucking up to central government to get funding and then wasting it on vanity projects. You see, the trouble is people like Andy Burnham and Sadiq Khan and the rest of them, they like the, the high life. They like the uh, relevance of being interviewed on TV. They love it. Please don't ever underestimate how these characters and other politicians love to be on Question Time and love to be invited onto different, um, you know, panels that are going on. I think the, the, the most important vote you'll place this decade 
is for a metro mayor. It's for a, a local mayor. It doesn't get any more important than that. The, honestly, the, the general election is of secondary importance to the people of Manchester. I mean, he's copying what you've got in now, Andy Burnham, with his traffic fines. I mean, capturing people that go into Manchester Airport, for God's sake, because the there's like the ULED zone fine thing, whatever it's called. There's a section of the motorway that takes you to the airport that's in it. And out of town is don't even know about it. This isn't this isn't to keep the planet safe and make it um the air quality better. Taxes do not change the air quality. You can get to net zero and atmospherically absolutely sod all will happen. Nothing will happen. The atmosphere will not change because China is spewing it out, India, Indonesia, they're all having a go at it, increasing their use of fossil fuels. Well, Andy Burnham jumps on the back of the net zero bandwagon, and it is a bandwagon. It's a trillion dollars a year industry where everybody's having a slice of the pie. Do you realise that the uh, World Health Organisation that controls a lot of climate stuff spent more on international travel in 2020 than it did on, on uh, infectious diseases? How can you even live with that? And bring that down to a local level. People at Andy Burnham support this stuff. They're, they're mad. They're absolutely crackpots. They're not fit to be in power. Someone like you putting yourself forward, trying to make a difference. You're a local bloke. You've run charities. You know what you're doing. You're bothered. It's coming from the heart. And that's what we need in Parliament. People who are bothered. We want somebody who's coming from here. Not here. Not scheming. We want someone who's doing this, doing what you're doing, putting themselves forward, putting up with the crap, going door to door, listening to people's problems, doing it to make a difference. And and I, I, I would love my area to be voting for someone as important as, as you would be if you got in, because they need to get back to basics. Vanity projects are a, a fool's errand. And I think the most important election that the people of Manchester will vote in is for the mayor. Well, absolutely. And what people don't seem to realise about Andy Burnham, because he's still fairly popular in Greater Manchester in certain sects, what they don't realise is Andy Burnham took the job of Mayor of Greater Manchester for one thing, a stepping stone to be Prime Minister. And that's all he's done in the seven years while he's been here. That's why he has vanity projects. That's why he's always commenting on international affairs and national affairs. He never talks about people being stabbed on the streets in Manchester. No, that's not good enough. He wants to be Prime Minister. He's standing on the backs of local people here to promote his career, ready to get back to Parliament, to stab Keir Starmer in the back and become Prime Minister. That's his aim. Well, the thing is, what people of Manchester and anywhere else when it happens for them have to realise is the only way to take back control of your own lives is to get someone in like you who will be concerned about the crime rate, who will be concerned about hospital beds being available, who will be concerned about things like flooding and not because of climate change, because they're not clearing bloody drains because gully wagons are being shared between county councils because they haven't got enough money for one. Why haven't you got enough money for one? Oh, that's right, because you spent £10,000 going to a seminar talking about how to carbon capture from bloody rocks in the sea. This is absolutely insane, because even when Britain gets to next year, we, sh we should look after the planet. We should get plastic out of the sea. Absolutely, I agree with all that. But the trouble is, this industry has now got a backbone of a money-making enterprise um, and Andy Burnham is the first in the queue to get government central funding for anything that's got to do with climate change. You see, what I see it personally that central government bribes people, bribes people like councils, because I've talked to councillors from Lancashire County Council where they say, oh, they're, they're really annoyed because Andy Burnham always gets in first to get the money. Um, and these people aren't bothered about you and me. They couldn't give a toss. What they want is their own careers. What they want is to shine brightly on the world stage. Oh, I'm on question time this week. <clears throat> I would rather have an ordinary bloke like you in a powerful position than someone like these bloody peacocks, these political peacocks. That's all they are. They've got the tails fanned out. Look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm important on the world stage. And they're that lacklustre and they're that talentless. We have to bring a moron like David Cameron back a political bloody zombie because we've had to make him a lord so we can go and be a foreign secretary to drum up 
war what does war bring funding there's always there's always a scam there's always some you know they run it like it's like this country has been run like a mafia no, i agree with every word you've just said i had some other questions for you but you know what you've answered everything and everything you said then i agree with and i just pray out of the three million people living in greater manchester i pray one or two million of them are just like you because I'll have a chance of being voted in then if they're just like you. Exactly. The ones that aren't going out to vote, it's the Manchester election that's the big one for you guys. Because if you get someone like you, you will attract people like yourself. People will think, oh, he did it. And then you can choose better counsellors. You can have your men around you that are like-minded instead of all these sycophants, these spads and assistants that are only with the MP because they want to be an MP one day themselves because they've studied politics at university. Don't study politics. Get outside, check your culverts, make sure they're clear by the county council so that when it rains hard, because it's raining hard a lot, that we can clear them out. We, we, you can't spend money on carbon capture when you can't even keep your drains cleaned. And crime. More policemen, proper policemen, not policemen up and down in gay-coloured bloody stab vests dancing in the street that don't make me feel safe that makes me feel unsafe i don't want people who are gay or otherwise to feel uncomfortable or to feel threatened but we've gone the tipping point's gone now it's gone too much the other way we are losing our values and people like andy burnham to me allow it and encourage it because they're not interested in our ordinary problems. So all the Brexiteers, 17.4 million people bothered to come out on a wet, horrible day and vote because they wanted control of their own country. The Tories, I wouldn't spit on them if they're on fire, have trashed it, completely trashed it. You haven't got a Tory party. If you've got a Tory candidate trying to stand against Sandy Burnham, he's not a Tory. I don't care what he is, he's not a Tory. You need an independent. You need either an independent or someone from one of the smaller parties. Party politics is dead. It's dead in the water. Even reform, it's dead in the water. Use reform as your jockeying point to get into the position you want. Because what we need to get rid of in politics is the whip, where politicians and councillors can be forced to vote a certain way to fit the narrative of a party. Forget that. Stick it where the sun don't shine. Manchester, you are so lucky. You have a man sat here. And the only reason I've got to know Nick is because I started following him because I thought, bloody hell, he's making sense. It's not because of any other reason. I don't do any podcasts for money. I do not get paid off anybody. I don't want your money. And I've got no money to give you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but just so people know, this is there's nothing, no hidden agenda with me. I do this because because I've got the time and availability to do it. I have a, I have a nice lifestyle and I've decided now that I'm retired, and I saw my country going down the pan and I thought, what could I do? I thought, I'm pretty good at explaining things. I'll try and get it across to people. Manchester, you are so fortunate. You can probably get rid of your stupid ULES zones, whatever you're calling it up here. These fines that are created out of thin air, taxes don't clean the air. Taxes do not clean the air. And scrapping cars, stupid ideas, the type of thing that Andy Burnham will probably back. It's all... Sadiq Khan, let's get your old cars off the road and then give them to Ukrainians so they can go and pollute in Ukraine. What's the bloody difference? These people are barmy. They're absolutely nuts. But Manchester, you are in a fantastic position to change it. Do it. Come out. It's one day out of your life. Come out. Go to the polling booths and vote. Vote for Nick because he's the one willing to do it. There's loads of people want change, but they can't be bothered to go out and do it. They don't want to stand for council. It's a ball ache, isn't it? It's a ball ache. It is. But Nick's Sad, doing it? it. Give him give him your support. That's all he's asking for. That's what I think anyway. Spot on, June. Spot on. And I think it's a perfect place to end it because I couldn't say it better myself. Thank you for coming on my podcast. Hopefully, hopefully I'll get a good result in three weeks today, the election. Three weeks today. Right, Thank okay. you again, and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for having me. All right, then. If you like that video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and comment. And if you like what I'm saying about running for Mayor of Greater Manchester, then stick around. Tell your family, tell your friends. The only way I'm going to have a chance of winning is a grassroots movement. So be part of that movement. 
and hit that bell. Thanks.